There are moments in our lives when a piece of cinema just hits different and suddenly everyone loses their mind about how good it is. The obvious example is the Lord of the Rings movies adapted by Peter Jackson. Almost universally acclaimed as not only some of the best movies of all times, but also one of the best adaptations of a really complex work. Now, if you look into the late 2000s, then we could mention Harry Potter, or in the mid 2010s, A Game of Thrones, or Marvel. And most recently, I would mention Dune, something I can foresee getting a similar legacy as the Lord of the Rings someday. Now, there is one sci-fi book that is so good that if adapted right, could rival all these huge franchises. I read this book early this year and it has become one of my all time favorite books. I mean, it is genuinely a near perfect book. But unfortunately, the more I've looked into the possible adaptation of the story, the more unlikely it seems. So without further ado, let's talk about one of the greatest sci-fi books of all time that will probably never get adapted. Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Uh, don't worry, no spoilers here. Now to even understand the challenges of adapting this book and why so many directors have tried looking into adapting this and later failed, we need to talk about what makes this book so incredibly unique and incredible at the same time. Now I know we have different opinions of what counts as spoilers, so if you literally don't want to know anything about this book, then please click away. But personally, I do not think I'm ruining anything here. So why am I calling Hyperion the greatest sci-fi book that will never get adapted? Well, here is a brief overview. Now at the heart of Hyperion lies a journey, a pilgrimage to be exact, seven strangers, each from different corners of the universe, are traveling to the mysterious planet of Hyperion. Their goal, to seek answers or perhaps salvation from a terrifying creature known as the Shrike. Now this setup may sound familiar, pilgrims on a dangerous journey, but Hyperion is anything but a straightforward tale. Dan Simmons structures this novel in a way that mirrors the Canterbury Tales, which each of the seven pilgrims telling their own backstory as they venture towards the mysterious planet of Hyperion. And through their stories, we begin to understand why each of them has been chosen for this strange and perilous mission. Now, these pilgrims come from vastly different worlds, both literally and figuratively. I mean, there's a scholar, a soldier, a poet, a detective, a consul, a priest, and a Templar each with their own motives, fears, and dark secrets. Now, their stories span across time, space, and even dimensions, often weaving together in unexpected ways. In a lot of ways, Hyperion reads like a short story collection with six vastly different stories set within a bigger story. And when I say that these stories are different, I really mean it. It is absolutely astounding how versatile Dan Simmons is as an author. I mean, if you want a beautiful coming-of-age story, Hyperion has it. You want a beautiful sci-fi romance, Hyperion has it. You want an exploration of a new planet kinda centering around faith and religion, Hyperion's got it. But the one constant in all of their tales, the Shrike, a terrifying mythical being that roams the planet of Hyperion. Now the Shrike is worshipped by some as a god, while others haunted as a monster. Now while its true purpose remains shrouded in mystery, we know this creature plays a significant role in how these characters are tied together. Then I also need to mention there are the time tombs, ancient structures on Hyperion where time flows backwards, which only adds to the novel's deeply philosophical, mind-bending narrative. Each each pilgrim story in Hyperion is like a puzzle piece offering insight into its rich, complex universe. And as the characters draw closer to the destination, the stakes rise, leaving us to wonder, will these pilgrims ever find their answers in the presence of the Shrike, or will they meet their doom? So that's a brief overview of Hyperion, but what really sets Hyperion apart from other science fiction epics isn't just its story, but its depths of its world building and the way it weaves together profound themes. Now, I mean, Dan Simmons, he doesn't just throw you into an alien world for the sake of spectacle, for example. Every element of Hyperion feels meticulously crafted to ask big, unsettling questions. The universe of Hyperion is vast and intricate with multiple planets, civilizations, and technologies. But what I love so much about this book is that Simmons, he doesn't just build a futuristic landscape. I mean, he populates it with philosophical and religious ideas that really challenge my understanding of time, faith, and existence. In a lot of ways, you could argue that each of the seven pilgrims we meet in the story represents a different aspects of the human experience. There's commentary on religion as the priest grapples with faith and sacrifice. And technology and its effect on society are explained through the soldier and the scholar. And then love and loss and even the question of what it means to be human are woven into the fabric of each backstory. This multi-layered narrative makes Hyperion feel less like a sci-fi adventure and more like almost a meditation on the human condition and its fragility. 
complexity. And it's also really worth noting that the structure of the novel adds another layer of complexity. I mean, Hyperion plays with multiple timelines, stories from the past, present, and future, and they collide in ways that almost makes the story feel like a puzzle. And then there's the element of time itself, which doesn't always move forward. In fact, one of the key mysteries, as I kind of mentioned earlier, the time tombs, where time flows backwards. This unique narrative experimentation gives Hyperion an almost, what's the word, like a dreamlike quality in places where you're seriously questioning what is going on here, making this book both challenging and incredibly rewarding for the reader. Now, what really makes Hyperion so unique isn't just its philosophical depth or its complex structure, but it's also the way Simmons blends genres, really defying typical sci-fi conventions. I mean, Hyperion is a sci-fi epic, yes, but it also has elements of fantasy, horror, and even romance. The story of Hyperion isn't confined to one tone or style, it kind of jumps between like gritty space battles and then deeply intimate moments of love and loss. There's action, but there's also a sense of wonder and sometimes even terror as the pilgrims recount their encounters with the Shrike. This blend of genre keeps you on your toes, never letting you settle into one narrative mode for too long, which truly, truly makes this novel so memorable. And then, of course, I have to talk a bit about the Shrike itself, a horror icon in its own right. Its presence brings tension and dread, making Hyperion feel like a horror story at times. I feel like sci-fi horror is such an underutilized trope or setting, and I loved seeing it explored in Hyperion. And then, yet in other parts, this novel feels like a meditation on love and sacrifice, especially in the tale of Sol Weintraub, the father whose story of grief and emotion is literally nothing short of heartbreaking. So I kind of mentioned this, but this combination of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and romance really gives Hyperion that unpredictability and richness that is really hard to find in one genre alone. I mean, it's literally one of the reasons why this novel has endured and why it's considered one of the greatest sci-fi books of all time. And also, sadly, why it's been so difficult to adapt. So you probably already get a sense of why this story hasn't been adapted yet, but let's have a closer look at the history of adaptations attempt because there have been quite a few. Now, when you have a story as epic, complex, and popular as Hyperion, it's no surprise that many filmmakers have dreamt of bringing it to the big screen. But unfortunately, for decades, this novel has been stuck in development hell, as they call it, with literally some of Hollywood's greatest minds walking away from the project. It makes me so sad. So let's start at the beginning. In the early 2000s, Martin Scorsese, known for his legendary films like Godfellas and The Departed, was reportedly in talks to direct an adaptation of Hyperion. I mean, guys, imagine a director as accomplished as Scorsese tackling a sci-fi epic like Hyperion. I would have loved to seen that. But apparently, as the story goes, the sheer scope of the project just became too much for him. The novel's multi-layered plot, intricate backstories, and mind-bending sci-fi elements were just simply too overwhelming to bring to life at that time. It's also worth mentioning that the technology probably wasn't fully ready to bring this story to the screen yet. Now, then came James Cameron. Yes, James Cameron was interested in adapting Hyperion. Oh, I mean, if anyone could do it, you'd think it would be Cameron, right? After all, he's literally the visionary behind like Titanic and Avatar. In fact, it's actually said that Cameron once considered making Hyperion before eventually deciding that Avatar was the easier project to pursue. That's just mad when you consider that Avatar cost like $240 million to make and literally required groundbreaking advancement in like 3D technology. That alone just gives you an idea of how daunting Hyperion is for a lot of directors. Just think about this. If James Cameron, the director who spent years perfecting the technology for Avatar, thought Hyperion was too complex, then that really says something about the scale of Dan Simmons' vision in Hyperion. I mean, the narrative complexity, the massive world building, and the revolutionary ideas that define Hyperion simply just didn't fit with in the limits of early 2000s filmmaking. But it's a shame because I really think that James Cameron could have been one of the best directors to tackle Hyperion, so it's a real shame he decided to go with Avatar instead. It's not bad, but it hasn't reached the heights we were hoping for. But it is what it is. Fast forward to 2011 and another major Hollywood name enters the picture, and it's a bit of a random one in my opinion, Bradley Cooper. Yes. I know, I was surprised as well. So in 2011, Bradley Cooper was fresh off the success of The Hangover, and he apparently signed a development deal to finally bring the Hyperion Cantos to life. And unlike previous attempts, Cooper hasn't given up yet. In fact, he's been steadily working on this project for over a decade now, or at least that is what sources tell us. Initially, Cooper considered turning Hyperion into a sci-fi miniseries, thinking that the extended format would allow for a deeper dive into the complex characters and themes. And in my opinion, this kind of made sense. As mentioned, 
already, Hyperion isn't just one story, it's seven deeply interwoven stories told through the eyes of seven unique characters, each with their own histories and motivations. But here is where things really get interesting. After seeing Denny Villeneuve, Villeneuve, I apologize guys if I get his name wrong. After seeing the success of Denny Villeneuve's Dune in 2021, apparently Cooper has shifted his focus. Now instead of a long form series, he's once again aiming to make Hyperion into a feature film. I mean it's clear that Villeneuve's success in adapting Dune and other sprawling sci-fi epic, which literally once was thought to be unfilmable, has inspired Cooper to think bigger. So in my opinion, in many ways, Dune has kind of provided a roadmap for filmmakers like Cooper. I mean, Dune has literally showed that with today's technology and a strong creative vision, it is possible to bring even the most intricate expansive worlds to life. And if we were to compare Dune and Hyperion, a lot of the same themes come again and again, like war, religion, politics, and the nature of humanity. It's kind of easy to see why Cooper might feel that the time is finally right to bring Hyperion to the big screen. But if there's one thing we learned in the past two decades, then it is the fact that there are very few stories that are truly unfilmable if the right director is at the helm and has enough money to spend as well. <laughs> Just look at Lord of the Rings. I mean, back in the early 2000s, many believed that J.R.R. Tolkien's epic fantasy was literally just too vast and complex to bring to the big screen. Yet Peter Jackson not only proved the doubters wrong, but he created one of the most iconic and beloved film trilogies of all time. It literally defined a generation of filmmaking, winning like 17 Academy Awards. And again, I know I love to mention Lord of the Rings on this channel, but those films just showed that with the right vision, the right technology, and a deep respect for the source material, even the most complex story can be brought to the big screen. And in most recent time, Dune. Literally for decades, similar to The Lord of the Rings, Frank Herbert's sci-fi classic was seen as one of the most difficult novels to adapt. Now I've heard that David Lynch's 1984 attempt, though visually interesting, was a critical and commercial failure. I mean I watched some videos online and it just looks super super trippy. But a lot of critics also said that the reason why that adaptation failed is simply because it couldn't balance the depth of the story Story with the limitations of the era's filmmaking tools. But in 2021, as we all know, Denny Villeneuve he finally cracked the code. Dune has literally been hailed as one of the best movies in recent time, being visually stunning obviously, and also just really thematically rich that really captures the spirit of Herbert's world. And one thing that's worth noting here is that by splitting the story into multiple films, Villeneuve avoided the common pitfalls of cramming too much into too little screen time. So these recent successes show something important, right? I mean, if Lord of the Rings and Dune can be brought to life on the big screen, then Hyperion is not outside the realm of possibility. It's all about just finding that right approach. You need to find someone that respects the depth and scope of the original story, while also using today's advanced filmmaking techniques to make it accessible to modern audiences. Now, while A Star is Born showcased that Bradley Cooper has the ability to make amazing movies, I have to admit, I'm kind of skeptical if he is the right person for such an epic like Hyperion. What really made Dune so successful was the fact that not only it had an amazing director in Denny Villeneuve, I mean man I'm totally butchering that name right, <laughs> but one thing that's worth mentioning here is that apparently Denny Villeneuve had been obsessed with the Dune story since he was like a teenager. So in my opinion the only way Hyperion can be successful on the big screen is by having someone in charge that is a genius one and two highly loves and respects the source material. Now I know Cooper he kind of wants to do a full-fledged movie but I think there's another factor here at play in today's landscape when discussing potential adaptations, and that is streaming platforms. Platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and HBO Max have completely reshaped how we consume long-form stories. Now, where once filmmakers were really constrained by two-hour limits, today's streaming services, they offer that freedom to expand narratives over multiple episodes and even entire seasons. I really think that this longer format of streaming could be exactly what the period needs. I know it's a gold standard, but if you take the Game of Thrones adaptation and incredibly intricate book series. This show thrived on the HBO streaming platform because it was given the time to build worlds, develop characters, and explore complex plot lines without that pressure of fitting everything into a single movie. I mean, in fact, many believe that Hyperion, myself included, would probably be better served as a series rather than a standalone film. I personally am unsure how it would even be possible to adapt this book into only a couple of movies. But I suppose it was done with Dune, so I'm not against the idea. But I just mean that with a TV series, that format allows for a deeper exploration of the book's rich themes, religion, philosophy, artificial intelligence, and the mystery of time itself. Oh, I really want to see this on the big screen, man. But I just think it makes sense, right? I mean, by focusing on long form storytelling, the adaptation wouldn't have to sacrifice the complexity that makes Hyperion so unique. So after decades of being labeled as unfilmable, why should Hyperion 
going to receive an adaptation now. Well, beyond the excitement of seeing such an iconic sci-fi novel come to life, I think there are several compelling reasons why Hyperion deserves its moment on the screen. First and foremost, Hyperion offers something truly, truly unique in the sci-fi genre. Yes, we've seen epic space operas and dystopian futures, but I really think the Hyperion stands out because it's not just a sci-fi story, it's a story about stories. Each of the seven pilgrims on their journey to this distant planet called Hyperion has a tale to tell, and these tales are so diverse and compelling. As already mentioned, but we have horror, romance, action, and so many deep philosophical reflections. It's almost like Hyperion weaves multiple genres together into a narrative that feels like a tapestry of the human experience. At times when audiences are craving more meaningful and thought-provoking stories, Hyperion is literally perfectly suited to that challenge, because it is a story that doesn't shy away from these huge questions. Questions such about like the nature of God, the impact of technology on society, and the sacrifices we have to make in pursuit of power or salvation. And also in a world where artificial intelligence and ethical debates are becoming more and more relevant, Hyperion is literally a sci-fi story for our time. I mean, I swear, Dan Simmons, he must be a time traveler, because his predictions about AI are absolutely insanely accurate, especially considering this novel came out in 1989 before the internet was even popularized. So guys, it is time for Hyperion to take its place among the great adaptations of our era. The technology is ready, the audience is ready, all that's left is the right vision to bring this unfilmable masterpiece to life. If Bradley Cooper is the one to bring this masterpiece of a book to the big screen, it's yet to be seen, but I really hope that one day this novel gets the same treatment as Dune has received, since not only is it one of the greatest sci-fi books of all time, but it has all the elements of what could become the next big thing if handled well. Now you want more commentary just like this one? Please check out my commentary on the state of modern fantasy. <laughs>